on them legs, Jahan. Stay on them legs. Yup. I like that. So we we had uh we at the Mayweather Boxing Club with Brother Farid Samad of Train to Perfection Mobile and now Global. That's just my little line, but I'm okay. actually Farid Samad is my given name. And um, let everybody know, like, what, what do you do here at uh, the Mayweather Gym? Uh, I'm a boxing coach, uh, trainer, and mentor. Uh, I uh, I trained Cormel Moten, who's 17 year old phenom, who just made his pro debut. He's 1 0 1 KO. He has a younger brother that you should look out for. His name is King Moten. Uh, he's eight years old. I think he'd be nine soon. Nine. So, but he's a uh, he's he's somebody you have to watch. But I um I assist and do the game plans for a lot of the boxers. I do the technical. I'm like an architect. I do all the groundwork to tell you, you know, what you should do. The ideal of hitting, not getting hit, and what implementing the plan. That's what I do. And about how many boxers do you actually work out with? Uh in this gym or train? I actually train maybe two or three boxers here, but I, I just help out maybe like five or six of them, but I only train about two. I only claim two or three, two, two maybe. Okay, and um, can you name the fighters that you're working with right now? Right now I train I train uh, Cormel Moten, 17 okay. years old, and I train uh, Brian Gallegos, who's uh, seven, six and one. Uh, he's making a comeback. Uh, he's fighting 135. And I just help out the rest. Like I assist um, Otis. Otis is a coach, and he he has a lot of fighters, and I just assist them guys and help them out, like structure their game plan and structure their footwork. So as far as training, like what's what's your favorite thing about being a trainer? I, I, obviously, um, helping out the community is one thing, but what, what's another thing that you could say about training that you? Uh, that you enjoy about it? I think it's like it's kind of like making a cake. Like when you have all the ingredients, the eggs, the butter, all that one separate, it just looks crazy. But when you put it all together and you bake it, it looks, it's, it's, it's like right. So it's the same thing with a fighter. Like you teaching them something, you talking to them, but you watch them sparring or in a fight implement what you taught, it's just like an overwhelming experience for you that, hey man, I he actually comprehend what I told him. He understands it and he actually did it. So that, that makes me feel good. My work is in here. I don't really care about the fight, the hype of the fight, and going through the motions and all that stuff. I have to go out with them, yes, but that's not my big part. My big part is in here, teaching every day. Like, there's videos of what you're going to display of me teaching fighters, talking to them step by step. That part I love. I can do that every day, all day. Could you explain just briefly the process of training a fighter? If, if, if there's I, a way to say no, it No, briefly. no, I, I'm so, so happy that you actually said that because I have, I've been talking about doing a, the inside scoop of a trainer or a coach to show them like everything that they go through to get the fighter to do X, Y, and Z or get them to the fight and do what you're talking about. Like this part right here is grueling. Like getting up in the morning now, there's 24 hours and every day you have 24 hours. And I don't mean it in the daytime because there's day and night, but there's 24 hours and then you roll over into the next, next calendar day. So in that 24 hours, you may be a night guy where you run at night because Vegas is really hot or you might run in the morning, but most of my guys are working out three times a day. They're running, they're doing the boxing part two, three hours, and then they're doing a strength and conditioning or they're doing some other extra act. So maybe a total of what, like three and a half hours training a day, would you say? No, no. I would say, I would say on the elite level, even in the amateur level, when I, when I boxed on the Olympic team and I was on uh, rank number one, we trained at least four four and a half to six hours a day. Okay. Yeah, because you have to go through the run. Running is 90 minutes. Okay. No matter what you're doing with your stretch and everything, that's 90 minutes. The boxing workout is two hours at, at the least. You know what I'm saying? So it could be a little more than that. And but then, essentially, my, but minus the running, about three and a half hours? Cause yeah, of, 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 of training-wise, teach. Because running is kind of really easy, I guess. I would say, like, it's just that you 
make it, feet it just, move. Yeah, it just probably requires yeah. a little bit more dedication yeah, to do the running consistently. You just, you just move your feet. So yeah. it's not really, you have to really think about it. Move yeah. your feet, breathe, you know. Yeah. Boxing part, you know, moving around, hands and feet, left hand going with your left foot, right hand going with your right foot, vice versa. That's at least three to four hours. Okay. And um, another question I'm trying to think of. So, so you just had uh, this young fighter, uh, Kermel Moten, yes. make his pro debut on Saturday on the undercard of... Uh, Canelo Alvarez yes. and um, and Jermel or with Jermel Charlo or Jermel Charlo? Jermel Charlo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, that being said, what what was that experience like, and what was that experience? I guess what was that experience like for you, and then what was that experience? I guess like for him to be uh, under the big bright lights for the first time as a professional. Well, it actually went smooth. Uh, well, he's he's really he's not new to it because he's an 18-time national champion, so he's traveled all over the world beating people up. So that, that was really uh, easy for him to do. Uh, I think, the pro I like, most people that turn pro, they understand that the professional is a little easier than the amateurs, because amateurs, you fight every day five times, or you know you fight five times in a week, you have to make weight every day, you only have to make weight one time, you only have one guy to go through, you have to study this one guy. So it's not really, it's not really, it's not really as complicated the headgear, no, of course, the gloves are smaller, but you have one guy to focus on. So it's really, really not that hard. And, uh, and I guess also, um, I'm sure, um, at least nowadays in the amateur, some of the fighters that he's fighting are actually better than some of the pros he might fight in the that's, beginning. That's, 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 hey, that's actually true. Well, I, I was um, national champ two times. I was a uh, traveled all around the world, alternate Olympic team. I fought 10 times, and eight of the 10 guys were, were so inefficient to the guys that I fought with. I fought with guys that won gold medal in the Olympics and I come and fight guys as a pro and I was like, this guy is trash. So, you know. So, um, I guess it's it's hard for me to ask you to assess his performance because you said it only lasted 76 uh, seconds. 73 but, seconds. But that being said, what actually led to that um, spectacular performance. Could you explain that possibly? The practice, the work inside of the gym. Like he did everything inside of the gym that we talked about or we worked on. It all came together. Some days you'll see a guy that he has good footwork but he ain't moving his hands enough or he's moving his head but he's not countering. That day everything came together and it was just like bam, 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 eight count, bam, 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 it's over. All right. So, Wow, and and his uh, his uh, what was his opponent's record? Four no three knockouts. Okay, so I mean he's he had a little bit of experience, yes. I'm sure. Yes, uh, if you watch Floyd Web Mayweather's first opponent, Javante Davis' first opponent, my first opponent, they were all horrible. You know they had maybe had some fights, but they were terrible. This guy was four and oh three knockouts. He got knocked down before in the fight, got up and whipped the guy. You know knocked the guy out, and we fought a guy that was really willing and we just made him look like made him look like he was a punching bag and um so i, I just want to say congratulations on that performance um obviously uh, a lot of eyes are on this kid um yes. big expectations um i don't want to kind of go too far into the future but what do you see in the in the near future for this kid well okay so he fought on saturday right he was in the gym on monday monday was his like off hang out, chill day. Today is his first day of camp because we're back on the horse. He should be fighting uh, in the next, they said three to four weeks. So. And, and do you have any information uh, what, what that's gonna be? Is that gonna be a local club show? Or no is that information, be, uh... but uh, he's 17, so he only can fight in Vegas as a professional. Now he okay. can do he can do exhibitions But he can places. do Mexico, uh, right? He can do Mex Mexico also, but we're not doing Mexico. Okay. He's signed on the Floyd Mayweather banner. We're not fighting in Mexico. Okay. We're only fighting in Vegas in the big show. So, so you're not doing a Devin Haney? No, nah, we're not doing okay. a Devin Haney. And um, I, crazy that you said that I trained Devin Haney for his first three professional boxing matches in Mexico. Word, so, word. But, and what, what was that experience like? I was just driving to Mexico, uh, renting a hotel, finding an opponent. Back then, you pick the guy off the wall, like, oh, yeah, that, that one right here, let's pick him. Then you okay. fight him. He knocked him out in the first round, and yeah. it was over. Yes. Yeah. And um, so, okay, mo moving on to uh, Canelo and Charlo. Yes. What, 
What are your thoughts on that fight and, um, I guess, Canelo's performance and Charlo's performance? Uh, br- briefly, just your thoughts on the overall fight itself. Uh, I, I was dissatisfied in Charlo's performance. I thought Charlo, everybody thought the same thing, but I'm just going to tell you my view. I thought Charlo was in there just to survive or in there just to compete. There's a difference between competing and winning. Like, like, like today, if you tell me, like, we're going we're gonna to do a marathon, 25, 20, what, 26.2 mile marathon, something like that, we're just, you and I are just going to compete in that thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to win it. I'm not even trying to win it. I'm just trying to survive it and, yeah. and say that I did it. And yeah. I think that's what he did. He, yeah. he was just in it to not to get hurt, and then he was so happy that he went 12 rounds with Charlie. Yeah, just, like, it, it almost appeared like he, he was just satisfied being in that moment. Yeah. Without um, yeah. trying to, for lack of a better way to explain it, try to go in there and go, to go win. for the goal. Right. Effort, um, effort, effort. So let me just say energy without effort means nothing. So he had the energy. He talked a good one. But he, his effort showed nothing. His energy was like, oh, I could beat Canelo. I could do this. I could do that. I'm going to do this. I'm a real lion. He got out there, and his effort showed that his effort did not match his energy, and that showed in his performance. It, it seemed to me um, there was some I, I, maybe self doubt, or he he wasn't believe or he didn't believe in himself, or he kind of went into the fight already that he resigned before he even entered the ring. Is, I, is that a way to explain yeah, it? Yeah, that's the perfect way to say it. It's just like he did not show he did not show up. He his body was there. You know how you say, oh, your, your soul's in a different place or whatever case, his body was there, but he was just moving around just to survive. I mean, I'd be thinking that some of them guys be betting on themselves just to survive or, or compete. It appeared Derek James in the corner was actually giving him the proper, or, or would you agree with me that he was giving him the proper instructions, but he just wasn't following the instructions that he was being given in the corner? Yeah, yeah, I think he was talking on deaf ear, but... Um, he was giving him, he gave him some good instructions and good things to do, but he would not, Charlo would not carry it out. So he actually made Derrick James look bad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He made Derrick James look bad. And um, that, that being said, since we're discussing that issue, um, it appears to me, and I'm maybe going a little bit off subject here, that whenever a fighter loses a fight, it appears either the public or the fighters themselves appear always to want to blame the trainer for the performance of the fighter. Um, what percentage of blame should be pointed at the trainer? Or does it just depend on the particular situation? I think it depends on the situation. And like you said, you, you if you're listening to Derek James, the one minute between the rounds, telling him, move to the left, slide, double jab, right hand, roll under, or when you get in the clinches, turn them, things like that. And then you go out and not compete or not do them. It, it doesn't make no sense. So um, I think that the fighter need to take responsibility or accountability for themselves also, because if you're getting the, the right instructions, and if you're not following them, then you know. They, but they always want to blame the coach. The coach is the first one that goes, "Oh, he wasn't doing a job. We got to get a new trainer." You got to look inside and see the person. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, Canelo's performance. What do you think of his performance? Was was that? Um partially because of Charlo, or was it because of what Canelo was doing? Uh, was it because of the weight, or was it a combination of uh, all three? I I can't blame it on the weight because even though he fought 68, he moved up two weight classes, he's naturally a taller and bigger person. So the weight thing shouldn't shouldn't have nothing, anything to do with it. But the idea of it is then you get into the ring and you don't follow out a, a mission. You know you have a bigger guy in front of you. Or, or a thicker or heavier guy in front of you, you know that you have to move a little bit, but you got to stand your ground and let those punches go. And he didn't stand his ground. He didn't stand his ground not one time. You know, he didn't step to Charlo. I mean, he didn't step to Canelo not one time. Canelo kept putting him in a headlock, and he didn't do nothing, you know, nothing in the process. He didn't hit. Uh, he, he didn't. Uh, he didn't put any fear in Canelo. No, he didn't hit him. He didn't hit him low. He didn't push him. He didn't elbow him. He didn't do nothing. You know, he just was there, you know, and it just was horrible. It was a horrible display. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I kind of agree with what you're saying because um, in one sense, it's a boxing match, but in reality, it's a fight. Yeah, oh, so yeah, you got to do, even if you got to bend the rules a little bit, 
to kind of take the other fighter out of their element. Like I have um, one of my mentors, uh, I've been around boxing for probably about 15 years uh, as a journalist, as a writer, a videographer. And um, one, one of my mentors, uh, he's a former amateur boxer. And he said, you know, when you're in there, you know, if you got to step on the guy's foot, um, certain little tricks and tactics, um, that's what you got to do. Sometimes you, yeah. you got to bend the rules a little bit. When the ref, when the referee, once the referee know that you got to make the referee stop you job, from doing right, right. what you got to do to try to win the fight. I, I, I'm kind of like, uh, my, my background is basketball. And I always think what John Wooden used to say, winning is everything. So to that point is, no matter how you win, you got to get the W. You know what I'm saying? If you got to do what you got to do, but you got to get that W. And that's all that matters to me. Hitting them low, pushing them down. But that guy just manhandled him, and he just was passive. You know, Canelo would elbow him in his throat, and he would look towards the referee. You don't need no referee. You don't need no help. Nah, I feel you. Um, I thought Canelo's performance was good considering the circumstances. Um, I don't want to keep you too long, but I want just one more question. Um, this is in regards to the heavyweight fight coming up. It's not a real fight in my mind, but I just want your thoughts on it. Um, Tyson Fury against Francis Ngannou. Um, Ngannou's never had a pro fight. What, what's your thoughts on that? Does he have any chance to even be somewhat competitive? Or I mean, I know uh, they say he's got a puncher's chance. Everybody but... say you got a puncher's chance, but I just think I'm, I'm just happy for Ngannou because he wanted medical and dental for the fighters, the UFC, and they didn't want to... They didn't want to do that. Um, he wanted, he didn't want like for himself, even though he was the heavyweight, he was the big guy in charge. He didn't want all these things for himself. He wanted it for the fighters to make sure they had medical, make sure they had dental, and they didn't want to do that. And so he's getting paid $20 million to fight. So he's already won, you yeah. know? Now, even if he gets a knockout, I don't even know. I, listen, I'm not betting on him to win. If I would have had a chance, like I always bet like, not with my heart, but with my life. I would bet on Tyson Fury to win. But I look at it this way is um, he he bet on himself. So you got to give the guy credit. Yeah. He didn't take nobody's crap. He's like, you know what? Um, if you don't want to give me what I want, I'm going to go find my own way. Yes. And it's not always easy to just walk away right. and try to be on your own and yeah. do things your own way. Yeah, I, I know that from my own so experience. So I'm telling you, he's won already. Yeah. To me, he's a winner. So, I mean, he goes from... I think the most he ever made was maybe $5 million in the UFC. And it could be less than that. But he's making $20 million. He's uh, got the thing now with the PFL. He's going to have fighters come over and do different things. He's won. So this right here is just maybe to me is like more like an exhibition. If hey, he lose, he win. Yeah. He's already won. So it's yeah, a win-win. There's, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing for him to lose because uh, no one's expecting him to win. Yeah, So exactly. That being said, thank you so much, oh, man. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate time. it.